I want to point out just a few things so that we can go on so that we can go on to the next. Let's look at um, <clears throat> let's look at some features here that I was asking you to try and find. You know, you're working with this list. There were a couple of things that weren't on the list that you um, hopefully found or hopefully asked me about. Did everybody find the four iliac spines? You know what it means by a spine? <clears throat> it's really, when I think of a spine, I think like of something on a cactus, right? These aren't quite that sharp, but the iliac spines are very easy. There's four of them. <laughs> this, you've got to know the anterior, right? The pubic facing part from the posterior. Right? So here are four spines, these four little lumps that stick out front and back. They can be fairly shallow. Right? This is anterior, this is posterior. One of the ways to remember posterior is this great big cutout here. Right? So if you can picture the four spines, then it's pretty simple. These are the two superior ones, right? Aren't these a in both front and back, these are above the other ones. These are inferior, and that's how you name them, right? Anterior, superior iliac spine, anterior, inferior iliac spine, posterior, superior, and posterior, inferior. Okay? Gosh, you get four things in a pattern, just boom, right? So that, that tends to be one of the uh, easier things to remember is these four spines here. Several of you asked me about gluteal surface. It's not in your book, right? Um, are we on the lateral or medial side of the bone here? Medial would be facing into the cavity. Lateral would be facing out, okay? This is the acetabulum, right? Does the femur fit in from the inside of your pelvis? No, it fits into the outside. This is a lateral view of the bone, right? This is the acetabulum. You can see the lunate surface here, right? The gluteal surface is where these gluteal muscles attach, right? You know gluteal muscles, right? And they sit right in here on the bone. So this area right up in here, right, this whole flat area, right, is all gluteal surface. Does that make sense? See why it's called what it is. You know what? That's the, the nice thing about human anatomy. Every name has a reason. If you know what the reason is, it's a lot easier to remember what it is. Now, in your, in your textbook, they'll have a line pointing here, and it'll say ilium, right? But that means... What they're trying to do is point to the whole thing. You'd have to color all of it, wouldn't you? Ilium is the name of the bone. We're looking at features. So there's a gluteal surface. <clears throat> Let's turn it over. Now we're looking at the medial side, right? I can still see the four spines, right? I can't see the gluteal surface anymore. There is an auricular surface here, okay? The reason for this is tied up in the word oracle. Anybody know what an oracle is? If you've been in my class before, you know what an oracle is. Right, your oracle is your ear. This is an oracle right here, okay? So look for a surface here that's shaped like an ear. Oh, I got a little picture. There's an oracle, okay? That helps, okay? And it's right here. If you look at this, wait a minute, don't go ahead of me. Back up. Okay. I don't know why that did that. Okay. So it's right here. Right? And if you look at yours, not all of this. Okay? This doesn't include... Right, this doesn't include this rough area up here. If you look right here, you'll see a nice 
especially on yours, it's a nice little rounded ear if you look at it on your bone, right? <clears throat> what this is, is this is where the sacrum fits, right? This is actually part of the joint between the sacrum and the ilium. Okay, let's come back to this side. If we're now down on the tuberosity, if we're down on the ischium, you want to be able to find the ischial tuberosity, which is the heavy part here. Ischial tuberosity is interesting because this is what you sit on. Right? When you sit on a chair, when you sit on any sort of seat, you always thought you sat on your bum, didn't you? On your, on your muscle. You don't. You sit on the bones. In fact, let me grab a... I've got a pelvis here real quick. That It's easier if you can visualize this from the bone. Right? Here's your pelvis. Now watch what happens when you sit down. See that? Everybody see that? This is what you sit on. These are your ischial tuberosities. And anything you sit on only has to be as wide as this. Right? <clears throat> Even fairly large people can ride little tiny bicycle seats. Right? Bicycle seat only has to be this wide. Now, you might, you might have a big pelvic, you know, and you, your, your ischia might be wider than the bicycle seat. That wouldn't be very comfortable. But this is literally what you sit on. Where you are right now, if you just rub your bottom onto the chair... Right? Or if you just feel around your cheek here, not all the way to the anus, but just, just, okay? But just right here, right beside the anus, you can feel there's a bony lump right there. It's okay, this is anatomy class, you can touch your body. It's all right. But you can feel this bony lump right there. That's your ischial tuberosity, and that's what you sit on. That's what you support your weight on when you sit down. Right there. The ischium goes down, the pubis goes forward, and the ilium goes up. There's no, there's no muscle over this. There's muscles attached into this. There's a lot of connective tissue here over this where the muscles attach. But this itself, I mean, I'm feeling it right now. It's right, it's right there, and it's hard, and it's, I can feel that surface right there. Okay? Now, one of the tougher things for students, too, is a ramus. A ramus isn't on one side of the bone or the other. It's the whole thing. Ramus comes from the word, or it's where we get the word ram from. The thing that makes a ram different from other sheep is its horns. And so a ramus is a term typically for a piece of bone formed like a horn, something that sticks out. And if you look, if this is the main body of the ischium here, there's this one horn-like feature that's sticking over to the pubis. Helps form this edge of the obturator foramen. Look at it this way. <clears throat> if we look at the pubis here, right, the pubis has two rami, right? There's a ramus here connecting this part over to the main body of the pubis, and there's a piece connecting down here to the ischial ramus. All right, so <clears throat> this, see the narrowest point here? Where this gets the narrowest, that's where it divides. And this is the horn, the lower horn of the pubis. It's the upper horn of the pubis. This is the horn of the ischium, All right? That, that helps you work with nouns and adjectives. You can say the noun of the noun. You can say the ramus of the ischium. Or you can put it together and you can say the ischial ramus. One uses an adjective with the noun ramus. The other one, you say this of that, you use noun, noun. So, And then make sure you can identify the pubic tubercle here. A tubercle is a round lump it's a round lump-like feature that sticks out. So if you're on the anterior side of the bone, on the pubis here, you will see right here a big lumpy thing that sticks forward. 
No, right there, yes. yes. Yeah, not at the joint, but right there in front. Hey, let's turn this around one more time, okay? The other thing that you want to do on the pubis is, whoop, right here, we have the superior pubic ramus. Here's a nice way to see all of it. Here's the superior pubic ramus. Here's the inferior pubic ramus, right? Here's the ischial ramus. That's this purple one here. The pubic tubercle is sticking out right here. And the small edge between the tubercle and the joint surface, this is the joint surface here, is the pubic crest. Pubic tubercle, pubic crest here. So there's, a, there's a whole lot of features. Remember, a ramus is a whole thing, not one side or the other. It's the whole piece of bone. Three rami right here, a tubercle over here, a lump, and a crest, the little edge between there and there. Um, it's easier, perhaps, to see the pubic crest if you look here. Right Here's where the two bones join together. The two yellow points are the pubic tubercles, right? And the pubic crest is the edge running between the two. If you've got only half of this, right, if you've only got one bone or the other, you have a tubercle here and then just a short little piece of crest on your bone. So it's a little harder to identify. Okay. See, that's all you've got. Right, on your own bone, pubic tubercle and a little bit of crest right there. Okay. One other feature here that goes right along with what we're doing in this area, um, there's gonna be a couple of pieces of connective tissue. Now you know what dense fibrous connective tissue is by now. A couple of pieces of dense fibrous connective tissue that you should know. And let me just insert them here. There's a, there is a long cord of connective tissue. You can see it's running from this anterior superior iliac spine right down here onto the pubic tubercle. And this right here is known as the inguinal ligament. The inguinal area is the area right beside your pubic area here. And the inguinal ligament and these two muscles form an area here called a triangle, the, the femoral triangle. And what it does is you've got this abdominal wall here that's covering everything. It anchors into here and there's a little gap here left under the ligament that allows the utilities, the nerves and the blood vessels to squeeze out from under your torso and into your pelvic area. You can see this if I, uh, I can do this right here. If I put my finger from the pubic tubercle here over to the iliac spine, you can see how there's a gap in there, right? And it's through that little gap that you have blood vessels and nerves and things running through. And... Um, Right, you want to see these these points. This is the inguinal ligament at the pubic tubercle. This is the anterior superior iliac spine, right? And the ligament's running right through there. Space between the ligament and the bone allows passage for muscles, blood vessels, nerves from the torso into the lower limb. Okay, we call it the femoral triangle. So this, this general area right in here is very well known. It's used a lot. If you want to take a femoral pulse, you can push right in here just below you know, the inguinal ligament. This is where the major artery comes through into the lower limb. Lots of important little things there, but it's really bounded by that. You want to know that inguinal ligament as one of the features, the connective tissue figure, features of the lower limb. 
<clears throat> here's uh, a better picture of that. Here's the surface of the bone down here. There's the ligament up there, and you can see here's two important muscles that squeeze through there, and here's the blood vessels, major nerve, right? All of those things are squeezing through that little space there underneath the ligament. And then the ligament, the abdominal muscles here anchor into the ligament right there when you get down toward the groin area, okay? So make sure you know the bony features here, and that'll help set you up for the rest, okay? So any other questions about the, uh, the first side of this? <clears throat> 